it's possible and not very difficult to estimate the area and perimeter of an irregular object with graph paper. And we have a really irregular object here in front of you. To estimate the perimeter, first of all, you have to choose a starting point on the perimeter of the object. And so we've done that here at the top left. You then take your ruler and you'll measure as close as possible a straight line distance to a point where the line begins to curve away from your ruler's straight line. And you can see that's about here for our first point. And of course you will write down the number of centimeters that that distance is. You keep a running tally of the lengths on your calculator or probably also on a piece of paper. We'll do this again, going to the next point where the line begins to curve away from the line of the ruler, and a third time. We're going to continue doing that all around the object, getting as close as we can. These curves may be a little difficult. Instead of doing one from here to here, you might do one here, and one down here, and then one on the curve. And then you can do a straight line to here, and do a couple or three here on this curve, and another one here, here, and so forth. And once you've completed the circuit, you'll see on this last one we just got tired and laid the ruler out so that we estimated this distance, but we cut off a little bit of the curve here and here. The last segment, the actual perimeter, is a bit longer than we measure. You're going to add the line segments to get your estimate of the perimeter, and yes, there will be some uncertainty. There is uncertainty that you add to every time you move the ruler, and then there is uncertainty in taking these curves and maybe you put a point here and a point here and a point here and you didn't exactly get everything perfectly right. That's just fine. You're getting an estimate of the perimeter and you're going to be close enough. How about the area? Well, if you have a piece of graph paper, you can superimpose the segments, you can superimpose the object on the graph paper and then each of these squares represents a little tiny area that is a part of the big area. Now if the area were perfectly square, squared up we say, and were in fact a rectangle or a square, you could just count the number of squares up and count the number of squares across and multiply and get the answer real quickly. We actually can do a little bit of that, just do as much of the area as you can with rectangles, adding up the number of squares in each part, multiply length by width. Let me show you how I did this. For instance, this is a 9 by 16 rectangle. That's 144 squares there. Here's another one that's 99 squares. Here's one that is 70 squares. And I've been taking, taking a little bit of liberty up here. With the, uh, with the original line. And then here's 9 and 30 and 15 and 12 and 16. Again, I've taken tremendous liberty up here with this, with this line. Finally, you're going to add up the individual blocks. Here's one. If you add this to it, it's not going to... This and this add up to be maybe two, uh, one and a half, and if you add this one in, then you certainly have two, and then here's three, and here's three, and this and this make one, and you can just ignore that. So you, again, estimate, and I estimated around number of 50 in the areas that aren't counted in the blue squares. And when we then add them up, I got 445. You can improve your confidence in your answer if each member of your team makes his or her own estimate, particularly in this last set 
of is that a full square yes is that a full square no but adding to this maybe these two together make a full square and if you get your own estimate you can then each one of you provide that number and all of you average them to get your estimate of the number of squares that make up the area of the whole irregular and then you can have an answer that may be suitable.